Our next presentation, it's someone special, someone I run into a lot uh, at different conferences, at different cloud events, different cloud summits, cloud conferences. Somebody who shares a common passion with me, and that is the passion of sales and marketing. All this infrastructure makes no sense if we can't find a way to get customers to connect with us and to help them understand our value proposition, understand why our value proposition delivers the business outcomes they want, and that's all the area responsibility of sales and marketing. I'd like to ask the director, the managing director of uh, Rosello, Mr. Birant van Delsven, to join me on stage and talk about the 10 sales and marketing tips for successfully transforming into a cloud service provider. And forget the technical mumbo jumbo. I'm with you on that. Birant, come and join us on stage. Uh, thank you, uh, David, for the cool introduction. Uh, we run into each other a lot all over the world. Um, and uh, yes, I've seen here on WHD there were a lot of presentations about uh, products, about the companies. And uh, what I will try to do to you today is, uh, of course, I will tell a little bit about Resello, what we do, but especially give you some tips and insights in uh, what we've learned and what we've learned uh, from our own company and also what we've learned from doing business with a lot of service providers around the world that are all making or trying to make this transition to the cloud and becoming a cloud uh, service uh, provider. So uh, my name is uh, Berend van Dalsen. David did a very good try in pronouncing my name, but uh, it's, it's Dutch, so it's a little bit difficult. And uh, I'm managing director of Resello and commercial director of uh, uh, Your Holding. It's a Dutch uh, group of companies uh, active in the, in, the, in the hosting and cloud business uh, uh, environment. Um, your hosting, our, our national company, um, is a, one of the biggest hosting companies in the Netherlands. Uh, started 15 years ago. And yeah, started 15 years ago with all traditional products, shared hosting, email, uh, you guys all know. And we made, with your hosting, a uh, transition to the cloud, uh, started that a couple of years ago. So I will try to also speak here today out of my experience with this transition, what I've seen with uh, your hosting. On the other hand, you see our international labels, Resello and Realtime Register. Uh, in 2004, we became an ICANN accredited uh, registrar, um, first for our own use, so registering our domains for our own purpose. Uh, later on, more and more resellers. Uh, Realtime Register now has 1,000 resellers uh, around the world. Uh, three years ago, we totally redid, with all the experience we had, we totally redid our uh, registrar platform which now results in that we have, uh, if I might say so, uh, the best and modern uh, register solution in the world. Um, more and more customers came to us and said, you have the experience with your hosting, with all kinds of products. We do domain names already with you. Um, can we also um, uh, buy and, 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 and um, uh, be a partner for you for all those other products? And on the other hand, we saw four years ago, we saw that there's going to be a tremendous a uh, challenge for all of the service providers in the world to make this transition, to make this um, change of a uh, traditional hosting provider into a cloud service provider. So that's why we came up with the cloud business automation platform uh, Resello, and I'll come back to that a, a little bit later. So first, yeah, why? Why would you um, want to become a cloud service provider? Um, First, of course, we all see that there are a lot of companies, and perhaps even yourself, thinking about changing from, from a CAPEX-orientated company into an OPEX, so for capital expenditure, uh, investing a lot in data center, a lot in metal, to uh, more operating expenses. You will notice this from your customers, and perhaps you're thinking about this yourself even. We talk to a lot of hosting service providers and, and telcos that are really um, want to put more attention and, and money and budget into the sales and marketing aspects of the company and not so much anymore into the, to the hardware, into the metal. So there's a great shift there. When you look to the growth and the possibilities of cloud, it's huge. Um, the, although products like shared hosting, et cetera, they're still growing. You might think otherwise, but there's still like 10%, 11% growth in that, but it's, the, it's slowing down rapidly. And the growth in, 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 in cloud, uh, cloud hosting is now 28% uh, on average uh, a year, 
when you look to the spending, the spending in cloud uh, technology, it's six times more than the spending in the traditional IT environments. So there's really a lot going on, and a lot of expenditures, a lot of possibilities uh, when you look to cloud hosting. Another aspect there is that uh, more and more products only are available as a software as a service solution. So you will also run into the fact where in the past you had the possibility to run applications in your own data center and supply it to your customers. You now are faced with the fact that a lot of those applications, they run in the cloud. So um, perhaps sometimes you do not really have a chance if you want to stay on top of new product development. Uh, and last but not least, of course, your customers ask for it. Your customers ask for cloud solutions, and you also see a horizontal shift in the market where you used to have really verticals. You had the telcos and the traditional hosting companies, the service providers. You now see a mixture of those. You see a lot of telco companies building up a, a, a hosting uh, platforms. You see hosting companies uh, supplying infrastructural products um, uh, uh, mobile solutions, uh, more, more than what we used to call the telco uh, products. So you see that this, there's a horizontal movement uh, within our industry. Um, but, yeah, knowing all those uh, possibilities, I cannot mention them all to, today. I only got 20 minutes. But uh, I can reckon, I can, can understand that sometimes you will feel a little bit itchy about all those challenges. How do I take advantage of those challenges, where do I start? So I hope that uh, I can give you 10 uh, sales and marketing tips, uh, uh, things that we've been uh, going through to, uh, to help you out uh, a little bit. The first tip I want to give you, and it sounds very easy, but it's not. It's probably the most difficult one, but also the most important one. Uh, that is, yeah, start with yourself. What is your strength of your company? And I believe David, the introduction from, uh, from the former speaker, David was already mentioning it a little bit about uh, start with the why. And this is what we many, many times forget. And uh, you, most of you probably know Simon Sinek, who came up with this story and said, yeah, most companies, they know what they do. Just a couple of companies, they know actually how they do it. But only a very few companies actually know why they do it. And why is not about making money. Why is about what, what, what's the purpose of your company? Why do you exist? And the why question you should ask yourself is, why should I change? And why should I change now? And why us? So you should really look into the mirror and say, why should we make this transition? Uh, so that's what I would like to urge you as well to start your uh, thinking here, and later on you will come to the, to the, to the how you're going to do it and what kind of products you will sell. I'll come back to later on uh, with some other tips to this uh, subject. The sec second uh, thing is uh, start on time. If you're not started already with this transition, um, you better hurry up. Um, if you're not part of it, it's okay as well, but then you should marketing-wise, really put yourself into a niche position. You really should look to your proposition and have a real good value add on what you do. That connects back to the why, why you're there. When you're really different than the competition, then you can do different stuff. So uh, otherwise, the whole market, uh, the whole industry is moving to this, uh, to this cloud, so you should be part of it. And in time, I mean, we see all those, like I said before, like products like shared hosting, still growing, but every year a little bit slower. And um, where you used to make money, you perhaps are making less and less money and perhaps losing money in the end. So to start up new products, you need cash. Um, it's, it's, it's a whole process, I'll come back to that, but you need cash, you need uh, a, a training of personnel, you need perhaps other infrastructure, you need, you need time and efforts to get all those products introduced into your company. So don't start too late that all your resources are gone. So that's what I mean with start on time. Third tip, start easy. We all think difficult. We all think uh, about uh, uh, the right bottom, diversification, to try something new product with new markets. We all have great ideas, especially the entre entrepreneurs amongst us, but Start simple, start with market penetration, that is, 
supplying more of, a, of the existing products, we call that deep selling, sell more of the existing products to your existing customers. I'm 100% I'm sure there's still a lot of extra revenue or extra, extra money to be made within your company if you'd really take a good care, to, uh, could look to your customers and see what else you can sell them. You can also pay more attention to upselling, um, uh, more uh, features in certain packages. It's the same products, but add some features and you will have a higher RPU, higher average revenue per user out of your customers. Those are, it sounds simple, but most of us ju just forget. We look to new products straight, straight away. But look to your current products, your current positioning. And then, of course, cross-selling. You know your customer base, they know you. You probably have them in your portfolio for, for, for five years or longer. They trust you. So if you come up with new products, they will trust you as their advisor, as their supplier. And so you can uh, also there increase your revenue. You will know the customers, the product is new, that's much easier than and new markets and new products. Because you have to realize the more you get to the right, the higher the risk. And um, I think what you would look to yourself when you have ideas in your company, we move straight away to the risky part. So it's a little bit of warning to you, start simple, start with the easy. Tip number four is uh, start different. Perhaps uh, you've heard about the red oceans and the, and, and the blue ocean. Um, it's, a, it's a strategy, it's a way of thinking. Um, there's a book out there, a Blue Ocean, and um, it's about where are, where's your competition? And we're all looking at our competition and we're all thinking, okay, they are successful with this, so let's do the same. But perhaps you should go back to the why and what you are good at with your, with your company and perhaps with yourself as an entrepreneur and then look what your position should be on the market. Try to find a spot in the market uh, which, is, which is different from your competitor. Um, uh, you know, cloud service providing, cloud hosting, whatever, it's not all the same. There are many flavors, there are many different ways of putting this into the market. So please think carefully about What's your position among the, amongst those, uh, those competitors? And create market share. Don't focus yourself too much in, in, in getting customers away from your competitors, but look for your own sweet spot, look for your own uh, place in the market. Tip five, and this is something that we really did wrong, <laughs> if I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm totally honest. Um, in the beginning, you have this idea about, about product introduction, and. MPD stands for uh, New Product Development. So start structured, follow a new product development process. We did not have that in the past. So we were thinking about the product, we said, ah, great idea, let's do it. Okay, how do we get it on the platform? Uh, what's our challenge here? How can we provision it? How can we build it? And we started building it and we, we tried to take all the hurdles and then we were finally finished. It always takes too long, you know how it goes with software development and products implementation. So you're finally you're there three months too late and then you introduce it to the market and then there's a sales team looking says, well, I wasn't really involved so I don't know a lot about this product. product. The support department is looking, I don't know a lot about this product. So with the MPD process, if you really structureize it well, you make a business case uh, in the beginning, you, you, you write down why is this product important to us, what's our goal with this product, how much money can we make on this product, how are we going to introduce it inside our organization, and you look as far as um, uh, the sales material, the support material, the training of your staff, uh, and also have other departments where you don't think about straight away, like finance and business intelligence, get them involved as well. We were introducing products on the market, and then after a while, we wanted to know some metrics, we wanted to know some, some information, and we said, oh yeah, oops, we forgot about that. We need, we need management information. So if you really follow a new product development process, you cannot forget, um, we can help you out as well, we've now, now we have lots of experience with this, uh, and it's good to have this structure in your company. It also relaxes the people around you because new product introduction is changing and people get nervous about changing. So if you do it in a structured way and people know they will get trained in time, there will be a support plan, there will be a backup plan, etc., then people are 
feeling much more confident about introducing new products. Moving to tip number six, um, start metrics. This was something we forgot in the beginning. Collect information straight away. Business intelligence is not what you see in a lot of organizations. There's information everywhere. Business intelligence is about having all your information on one place. So um, also working on like a copy of information. What we, what we tend to do is like distract information from real resources, from, from, from uh, sales statistics, from, from, from purchasing statistics, all kinds of information. The idea behind business intelligence is collecting all this information, uh, make a copy of it in one big data warehouse, and think in advance what are the questions that I will have in the future which, which I need to be uh, answered by, by uh, this business intelligence system. So it's not only about collecting information and storing the information, we can all do that, but it's about transferring this information into usable uh, metrics, into usable insights and trends that will help not only you as the management, but also your, your people, even on customer support. With the right business intelligence, when, you, when a, a customer care has someone on the phone, they can see in the system what is his history, what, uh, how many times has he purchased the product, how, how long did he hold on to the product, etc., etc. And when you have all this information, then you can really improve the level of customer care and all other aspects in your, inside your company. So business intelligence is getting more and more and more important and it's often forgotten. Tip number seven, yeah, that ties, of course, a little bit back to, uh, to what we do with Ricello, is that uh, partner up, uh, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, when you look to all the challenges that you have with um, selecting the right products, talking to all the vendors, the, the contract sizes are getting bigger and bigger, so, so a lot of vendors, you're only interesting for them if you sign up for this volume. Can you do that on your own? then you need all the knowledge for the products, you need technical uh, information about APIs, how do I integrate this with my other systems, how do I provision the products, how do I build the products, a lot of things you have to do. If you have the resources, you might want to do it yourself, but really watch out because it's, it's tremendous. Uh, you can lose a lot of money on it, so my uh, tip to you is really partner up and uh, of course I'm standing here on behalf of Ricello but there are others there as well uh, uh, make your best choice based on your situation what you need uh, wh what are your goals but really uh, orientate yourself talk to other users of the platform and don't try to all do it by yourself because it's uh, it's a hell of a job so partner up and uh, become part of a team uh, to make this a success, because what's really important coming back to timing is your time to market. When you look to product introductions now, how can you as a company introduce six, seven new products a year? Perhaps you could do one a year if you're lucky, but you really need, if you need uh, to keep grip on the market, you need to introduce five, six, seven products a year. Is your organization suitable to do that alone? If not, partner up. Tip number eight is uh, speak your customer's language. Um, it's a little bit my thing as well from, from the marketing and communication uh, side of, of, of things. Um, a lot of our companies are technical companies. Uh, most of, the, of the, the founders of the companies were technical orientated and we're all here hearing a lot of technical buzz and technical uh, blah blah. Uh, watch out with this. If you're talking to the CTOs, the people who need to, to do the integration, they will understand all the abbreviations, they will understand all the technical uh, mumbo-jumbo, as I call it. Um, however, you also talk to decision makers who are not so technical, perhaps, and so you need to speak the benefits of the product. Uh, um, business owners might not care if it's Azure Stack. You know, you need to, you need to go to Azure Stack. He needs to know why is Azure Stack such a good solution? What benefit do I have when I use a hybrid cloud uh, instead of a public-only cloud? And so you need to adapt your language to the audience you're, you're, you're targeting. And this is very often forgotten, uh, so that was my tip number eight uh, for you. 
Tip number nine, um, activate users. Uh, selling a product is one, um, but to have active users who are actually using uh, the product, that's two. Um, we've seen this with Office 365, where we were changing from more like traditional product like hosted, uh, hosted, um, hosting exchange to Office 365 as a uh, Microsoft CSP uh, partner. Uh, and we were selling to some, uh, some customers like 10 or more, uh, just an example, uh, licenses. But actually, when we looked to the metrics later on, we found out only, there were only two users. So you will see a lot of churn. The other eight licenses, they will get killed. They will get um, um, uh, deleted later on, and you're back to two. So we set up a program to really follow and see what is the activation status from our customers. And when we see there are only two users out of 10, we will get in touch with them and we will help the other age because most of the time it's, it's about knowledge, it's about being a little bit afraid to make this step from, from the one package to the new package of th Office 365. So to help them out, help them um, uh, find a way around and then um, um, you will see that you will very likely um, can obtain all 10 uh, licenses. So activation of users is really important. Trace everything what your customers are doing also after the sales. That's very often forgotten um, that we consider it all about sales and we've sold that many licenses, but really keep trace of your customers and follow up. Tip number 10 um, is value add. Turn up your value add. Um, Coming back to my first sheet about the why, you know what you're good at, you know the value that you can deliver to your customers. And also, for example, with products like Microsoft, we've seen within our company that sometimes we've sold licenses at double the price of Microsoft, but we were adding customer care, we were adding advice. There's a big challenge in the market and all reports, and perhaps you've been in some keynotes here uh, from uh, 401 or other um, uh, uh, IDC, other organizations, uh, research has shown that there is a tremendous um, opportunity in consulting, in advice, and, and there's money to be made there. Your customers, they want to be advised by going to the cloud, they want to be helped by you. So turn up your value add, and there you can increase your margins. And one last thing, a lot of you also have proprietary systems, you have your own IP, so don't throw it away, use it. And if you can add your own IP even on top of this, you can even make more margins. So also with CSP, with cloud service provider, margins sometimes from the vendors like 20%, you can turn that up to even 60% if you add the right value. So that, that was my 10 tips uh, for today. Um, hopefully they were useful to you out of our experience, and hopefully it gives you a little bit more zen feeling than the itchy feeling uh, you might have had in the beginning. Uh, my message to you is uh, be part of it. There's a lot of opportunity. Um, we're still around here a little while. Come to our booth um, and talk to Reseller team. Um, we offer this uh, cloud distribution platform, a cloud marketplace. It's our mission that we say we make selling IT solutions easy. So we want to help you out with the platform, with the products we have, but we also want to help you out with the team we have, with the experience we have, and then some of the tips that I've given you, we're very willing to share that with you in practice and uh, make this transition happen for you and move to the cloud. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, see you again.